Good morning and welcome to the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. Before we get into today's episode, I have a little bit of an editorial note for this episode. And that is, this episode was recorded live, but due to a YouTube glitch, the first five minutes did not properly record. So uh, we apologize immensely to today's guest, the Member of Parliament for Calgary Skyview, my Member of Parliament for Calgary Skyview. Uh, Mr. George Jahal. He sat down with us in a busy time of his uh, life. Uh, he was back in Ottawa remembering the Queen. Uh, he was getting back into the swing of things with the return of Parliament this week. And we, 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 we screwed the pooch on this one. And I, I do apologize immensely for George, and but also his team that helped set this interview up. Uh, we did get the last 30 minutes of the interview, but just that first five minutes where we talked about why he was back in Ottawa and what he was hearing uh, from Canadians over the summer. We did catch part of it, but we did miss the first five minutes. So I do apologize. And we, we, we try our best to make sure all audio isn't cut. And this one, it, it's a very odd introduction. We just wanted to be upfront with you before we got calls or emails about why we cut George's uh, interview. But we didn't. It was our fault. We do apologize immensely. So with that, here is our interview, part of our interview, with Member of Parliament for Calgary Skyview, Mr. George Shaw. With all the challenges we've had in our country with COVID-19, and you know with the vax great job on the vaccine deployment throughout the country but also you know we've lost a lot of people along the way um during that and you know thinking about all the challenges and we've overcome as a nation um through that time but now we're how we're transitioning to the other side of getting back to normal um trying to deal with the global challenges with the domestic challenges we had a big trucker convoy here um, which shut down the city of Ottawa. And uh, that was a really challenging time for the folks and residents here in Ottawa, but across the country as well. Uh, so for me, it's been a really busy year. I can tell you there's a lot of travel. It's exciting uh, when you start to travel that you're traveling. It's exciting to fly again. Uh, but I'm doing it on a regular basis, on a weekly basis, because I want to do my work here in Ottawa, but be home in my constituency, working for the, the great people of Northeast Calgary and Calgary Skyview and listening to them and learning from them and so how I can be better to do my job. Uh, I'm on two very important committees for our region and our city. One is the Natural Resources Committee. The other is the Transportation Infrastructure and Communities Committee. And I also chair uh, the Prairies and North Caucus. So that keeps me really biz busy and with my three girls and my spouse um, and my dog, can't forget the dog, uh, I have a really busy, active life uh, when I'm at home in Calgary, uh, balancing all that, but also when I'm out here. Let's talk about your recent travels, because you've been off for the summer. You're about to get back into the House of Commons next week. Uh, Parliament resumes. It is sitting today and tomorrow, but that's for the uh, memorial for Queen Elizabeth and the ascension of the throne, uh, King, George, uh, King Charles III. What have you heard from Cal uh, Calgarians, Canadians from coast to coast to coast? Because I followed your uh, social media feeds and you've been not just here in Calgary Skyview, but you've been traveling across Western Canada, speaking to mayors, uh, Canadians. And what have you been hearing about what they're going through and how your government with the Prime Minister Trudeau and the Liberal government has been addressing those issues that you've been hearing about? Well, you know, I've had the opportunity to travel throughout Saskatchewan and many parts of Alberta. Um, and I take my role as our caucus chair very seriously. But, you know, for me, it's about going to places and going to the folks we represent and going right to them and listening and learning from them. Um, there's various perspectives all over the country and in our region as well. And it's been um, eye-opening uh, for me in many different ways to see the tremendous opportunity we have in our region uh, from talking to 
mayors and councils and farmers and ranchers and energy producers um, to, and you know newcomers and folks who have been here uh, you know for a long long time our indigenous communities and getting the wide range of perspectives that we have in our region but you know also the challenges they're going through um, and what they would expect to see us do but they're just the appreciation that you're here you're listening to us you know whether we agree or disagree and long as I always say this, as long as we do it in a respectful manner of dialogue and debate, um, we need to disagree. We need, we will agree and we won't agree on everything, but at least it's a starting point to get and move forward and how we can do better. So I think what Canadians expect and folks in our region really expect is for government to collaborate, to work together, not just point finger fingers, but provide solutions. And we unfortunately, um, you know, haven't had enough of collaboration uh, where we have a globe, we have a war going on um, and, and it's caused major disruptions in global supply chain, which is going to cause major disruptions here domestically and seen with inflation and everything we're seeing um, with the rising costs of many items. But how do we work together to make sure we can solve these challenges and provide support for the people we serve? And I think what our our uh, constituents want is you know what let's put aside the partisan bickering and finger pointing bring forward solutions solutions that improve our lives and give hope for the future and, I, and that's what i'm hearing that's what i'm seeing obviously there's some folks who are who don't like the way certain things are done but that's okay that's going to happen um and i'm just happy to be that person who's He's not afraid to go out in places where I may perceive not to be welcome, but when I leave, um, you know, I always get at least you came here and you had this conversation with us. So I think it's important to do that, and I'm going to continue to do that. Be you, you, you opened up a few line of questionings that I want to touch on here, and that let's start with the last thing that you just said, and that is people may not welcome you, but after, by the time you leave, they feel like they 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 are happy that you came at least to hear their concerns. Uh, we saw over the summer here in Alberta, the Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland uh, verbally. Uh, um, I, I don't want to say assaulted, but verbally attacked in Grand Prairie. Um, you and I both know that that's not what the true Alberta is. The true Alberta is someone who's friendly and welcoming. I came here from Ontario. I feel accepted. Is this just a one-off incident that was taking place? Or do you think this is a bigger issue that needs to be addressed, whether it be women in politics, whether it be the verbal uh, discourse that we are currently seeing within our politics? You know what? Um I wish it didn't happen. I wish it was a one-off incident. Unfortunately, it's not. Um, too many politicians uh, across the country, across the world, but across the country are being uh, attacked like that. Um, and in some cases, uh, violent attacks, and it's led to um, you know, individuals getting killed. And this is a deep concern that people believe that they have the right to take out their and express their anger and frustration in that manner. Um, I also think it's quite cowardly um, that folks do that uh, and very disrespectful. And we are a very diverse and inclusive province and region. Um, I represent probably one of the most diverse ridings in the country. Uh, and I find it absolutely disgusting um, when folks do that to elected officials, but any member of our community. And, you know, people should feel safe in their communities and should feel safe to go to any part of the country um, and debate and have an appropriate dialogue with respect um, and, you know, maybe with disagreement, but at least in an appropriate manner. Um, what we saw with uh, our deputy prime minister was absolutely disgusting. Um, you know, personally, I faced a lot of that as well. And, and generally, what we've seen politicians, elected officials being targeted um, is unacceptable. It's unacceptable because we need to do our jobs for our constituents. Uh, we need to feel safe, but also our families are concerned about our health and well-being. And it does take a toll on your, on your mental health and, and well-being when incidents like that happen. Um, she's a strong leader and she's focused and she's committed to representing our communities, the province where she's from. 
um, and who, where she comes back to on a regular basis and committed in doing so. And I'm committed to doing the same thing. So it's not going to deter me. It's not going to scare me um, and intimidate me to back off uh, when folks show up at your home or at your constituency office and um, use verbal language and threats towards one. It, it does um, you know, bring forward a number of concerns, but we also are seeing a backlash from our communities who are saying, you know what, we need to take stronger action against individuals who are, uh, who are bringing that type of behavior forward. And whether that's through more security that we have to put in place, but also through, you know, future other legislation. We've seen too many people across this country attacked um, by hate. And unfortunately, it's the partisanship we've seen. It's the it's a type of rhetoric we see south of the border coming up here and people leaving and, and politicians as well, fueling a lot of that behavior and anger. And then it chan channels and manifests itself with outbursts like that uh, and attacks on folks. So um, I'm hoping folks will uh, calm down and take a deep breath before they resort to that type of behavior. But you know what? We have to continue to keep doing the work we do. And I'm going to continue to doing the work I do. It's not going to uh, stop me from doing so. And I thank you for answering that. And I want to turn to the work you're doing, but also your government, what your government caucus is doing as well. Um, you, you spoke about it, about what you heard during your uh, time in the summer, and that is inflation. That is on a lot of people's minds right now, uh, whether it be affordability, uh, inflation, it affects everyone from coast to coast to coast. Everyone's being affected by this. What is the government doing to help combat that uh, the rising prices that we are seeing? You talked about the war in Ukraine. You talked about the supply chain uh, crunch that we are in. But that doesn't help my pocketbook today or tomorrow. But what is the government doing today to help with uh, the rising costs, but also address these affordability issues? Well, number one, what we don't want to do is fuel further inflation. And, and be reckless in the type of antics or suggestions that are being thrown out there by other parties and uh, in the opposition, uh, is we need to be focused on letting the, the Bank of Canada do its work. They've been uh, monitoring and they've raised interest rates to curb inflation through monetary policy. Um, but as a government, you know, affordability is a concern for us. We know the challenges people, you know, constituents are having a coast to coast to coast. I've talked to members of my community and they're concerned about inflation, but they're also concerned about affordability and how do we, you know, how can the government support us? So we did a tremendous job during COVID in supporting our economy, making sure we got not just retained the jobs and businesses and kept folks afloat with CERB and uh, the small business supports, but also that we come out of COVID stronger, which we have. We've seen a tremendous recovery, more jobs um then we started uh with, that we ended with at the uh, start of COVID um and and I think that's just a tremendous job and I wasn't an MP at that time but the leadership to make sure they were there to support Canadians but we also realized over the last number of months what is the best way to support Canadians without fueling inflation so we talked a lot about childcare to support which many um uh, across the country, the child care agreement is going to support families and get more women into the workforce, but also save a lot of money for folks. The recent announcement, the affordability plan we have coming forward uh, with dental care um, to making sure that low income families um, and middle income families have dental care and how we can get money back in their pockets for those costs while maintaining health and wellness. But then the GST uh, rebates are important as well to making sure uh, we're putting money right back into the pockets of low-income Canadians who are affected by rising costs. Uh, and then the rental support, housing supports as well. So this package um, that's being brought forward uh, is supporting the most vulnerable in our country and folks who we don't want to become further uh, affected by this. And you know, we've seen with seniors with a 10% increase on in, uh, old age security. You know, these are just, these are important steps to protect, uh, you know, the, the most vulnerable in our nation and low and middle uh, income families who have been affected. And, you know, our government will do more wherever it's required to support individuals across and families across this country. 
Um, but we also are focused on the other end to making sure that anything we do, that it does not uh, make our issues that we're having with inflation worse, that we continue to fight inflation, to bring that down, to control that while we support uh, Canadians and make sure we deal with many other challenges we have, such as uh, uh, getting more folks working and getting workers to fill those jobs. Um, We are... I would say we are trying to see the, uh, the the light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to COVID with getting more jobs, with the sort of less pressure on the healthcare system. Uh, the provincial governments here in Alberta and Saskatchewan says the federal government needs to step up and do more with when it comes to healthcare, when it comes to uh, helping the job market. You mm-hmm. you have spoken across Alberta and Saskatchewan to mayors, councillors, uh, Canadians. When you speak to the uh, the the municipal level, what are they saying about healthcare and jobs? Is it an issue to them, or is it local issues that are more important to them right now? Whether it be infrastructure spending, whether it be this, that, or the other. What are you hearing from those mayors? Well, we've had a, I've had a number of different conversations. So in many communities, the conversation is on infrastructure and support to do more for their communities from wastewater to roads and bridges to public transit. Um, and earlier on, I think in my early days, it was about making sure we could get more support to support municipalities on the shortfalls they're facing, which we did. Um, and the Federation of Municipal- Canadian Municipalities um, really advocated for some of those measures and that's supporting fare box uh, revenue losses throughout the country, which we did. Um, but then we have other challenges of, you know, the, the future economy. Uh, how do we have the workforce in place to support our growing economy? And that's why, you know, we're doing a, a study in our natural resources committee on a just transition. We're trying to find ways and making sure that we are transitioning to a sustainable future in energy. But I always say, what that does that our look region, like for you? Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but what does a just transition yeah. look like to you? As the Member of Parliament for Calgary Skyview, one of the few MPs in Alberta and Saskatchewan who are a member of the Liberal Caucus, what does a just transition look like to you as the MP for Calgary Skyview? Well, what I know is that we're having an evolution in our energy sector and global energy. So what does that transition look like? It's going to take, a t- it's going to take time. Oil and gas is a part of that. But the future is other forms of energy that are going to um, be really important for us as we grow into the future. And so that's wind, that's solar, that's going to be hydrogen. Um, LNG is going to play an important role to be that bridge into the future. But we have a tremendous opportunity, Chris, not just to be an, a leader in oil and gas. We already are. To be a global leader in all things energy. And that means the energy, our people being our strength, um, but making sure those folks have jobs in all forms of energy and sectors around that. That means renewables as well. Yes, it does. That means in hydrogen. But the same skills one needs to do the work in oil and gas, you need the same skills to do the same work in hydrogen and geothermal. So there's a growth of opportunity, but we have to let those clean tech sectors of our energy mix to grow and flourish. We also have to look at manufacturing. You know, how are we going to, how can we do more of that manufacturing here locally as well? You know, those, uh, those well bits and all the piping that gets manufactured out here um, and fabricated. Well, let's keep doing that, but let's make sure we're doing it for geothermal and solar and wind as well. And other opportunities that are coming forward. So we have a great opportunity to look at the energy mix and be a global leader in energy, all things energy right here in Alberta, that we can provide the Canada with clean energy, but also provide the world with energy security with the appropriate diversified energy mix. For too long, we've put all our eggs in one basket and supported maybe one industry or thought one industry was the one path forward. And we've seen these booms and bust cycles. I think moving forward, I think Albertans have realized that we do need a diversified economy. Our economy is diversifying. 
and we will be stronger on the other side. And we're seeing tremendous investment in uh, hydrogen and with the carbon capture and storage, the number of opportunities we see for our province to be cleaner and greener and making sure that we have the cleanest barrels of oil in the world, but also have uh, renewables being an important part of the mix as well. Uh, I want to turn to one last subject before we wrap up here, George, and that is uh, a, a sort of a provincial issue. But uh, as the member of parliament for El- for Calgary Skyview, uh, you have crisscrossed this province and also this uh, Western Canada. There's been a lot of talk over the last few days about a sovereign Alberta, a, a more autonomous Alberta, uh, more an independent Alberta uh, getting uh, Ottawa out of this. When you were talking to Canadians in Western Canada, in Alberta, is this topic on the uh, mind on, on people's lips? Are people talking about more autonomy to you saying we need Ottawa out of uh, our lives and we need to just sort of go alone in the Alberta way? Or is this rhetoric that is just being sparked by that American style politics that we talked about earlier? Yeah, I, you know, I haven't heard uh, on my travels anybody talk about that um, as an issue. Um, we do know there's been concerns of the West Wanson or WEGZED and now the Alberta Sovereignty Act. And, and I think this is disruptive. I think Albertans want collaboration between governments. Imagine if we had government that worked together, Alberta with Ottawa, with our municipalities, rather than creating division, let's work together. Let's say, sit down and say, okay, what can we do? I mean, uh, we've had governments say that our government doesn't support the energy industry. Well, we're the government that built and uh, bought and built a pipeline. We're building it. So our energy resources to get to market. So we get more value for it. That's investment. No other government's done that in recent history. Um, and if I'm wrong, let me know. But as far as I know, um, our government's done that because it's the right thing to do. But we are here to support the growth of our province, but we also have responsibilities globally, domestically, for the other regions across the country to make sure that we are, as a nation, working together. That's what our confederation is about. And we started the conversation of um, our country, you know, and the loss of our, our monarch and the queen that for many, that's the only monarch we ever knew and how this country was uh, formed. You know, it's a confederation of provinces working together in the best interests of a nation. And we have to continue to think about Canada. And as a country, we're going to have challenges. We're going to have disagreements. But we all have that in our families. But we need to be united together when we move forward, when we deal with the rest of the globe. Or the whole country is going to suffer. All of our regions suffer. So we need to have that united front, a Team Canada approach, like we did during COVID to get vaccines here, to get folks vaccinated and support people. But we also need to make sure that we're not using inflammatory rhetoric to, to get some angry folks um, fired up to come and uh, uh, to create further division in our country. We've had enough of division. So I'm going to say to all those politicians who are doing that, back off, bring forward policy solutions and ideas. Let's work together so we can have a brighter future. I want to turn to my last uh, sort of question and then we'll wrap up. And that is, what's next? You are back in Parliament uh, as of next week, uh, Tuesday, Monday, I believe is a holiday federally. I'm not sure if the House is sitting that day, but Tuesday you are back in session. Uh, Work on the committees will be taken underway. House of Commons uh, work will be uh, happening. What's on your agenda? What's on your agenda for this fall session to make sure the the voices of Calgary Skyview are heard in the uh, House of Commons? Well, um, I can't give you all my secrets right now of my plan moving forward. Uh, breaking news and uh, release it all for you today. And you'll have to watch a little bit, see what I'm up to in the next few months. But I'm going to keep, you know, it's been a growth year for me to learn how um, Ottawa works and how we can get more done. And I'm going to continue to keep collaborating with my constituents and stakeholders in my community on important issues so we can have a strong recovery uh, strong economic development and growth moving forward. Calgary Skyview, with with everything we have, we are uh, an amazing community with amazing potential with our airport, with the rail lines, and 
uh, intersecting our constituency um, and the, the strength of our people, the diversity that folks coming from all over the world with all those experiences and connections and that spirit of working hard and, and building something stronger and better. So I'm, I'm gonna continue to work on doing the work I do to build infrastructure in, in Calgary in Northeast Calgary uh, to make sure that we're getting more to make, meet the needs of our constituents, but also continue to transition when it comes to uh, a stronger, sustainable economy for the long run. So making sure I was devastated by a, a massive hailstorm a few years ago to making sure that we continue to work on rebuilding our communities back and how can we do better with um with buildings and efficiency in buildings and building more resilient housing in our community, but really on the jobs, making sure that the underemployed Calgarians and constituents of mine in Northeast Calgary, those engineers, those nurses, those doctors have those opportunities to work in their field of expertise. And that's something I'm gonna really drive forward and making sure that we're doing and continue on the work that I'm bringing some motions forward in our Natural Resources Committee to study, I think, uh, some issues that are really important. Watch out for that very soon. I think that's really important for not just our city, but our country. And continue on working together to make sure we're a, a, a prosperous community, a prosperous city, and a prosperous country. Kind of a weird question, but I'm going to ask it because I have you right here. And I know I said 30 minutes and it's coming up on the 30 minute mark. And I just want to ask this last question. While you represent the riding of Calgary Skyview, do you have to, is it more, is it harder for you to try to represent all of Western Canada in your caucus? Because you are that caucus chair for Western Canada in your liberal caucus. Or do you find it easier to do that because you're able to address all these issues because what happens in Calgary Skyview is what's happening. And I say this with all due respect to Western Canada in Saskatchewan, in Regina, mm -hmm. uh, Wasquin, whether it be Edmonton, Peace River, Westlock, is it, is it easier or is it harder to sort of address all the issues that you're hearing because you're sort of pulled in different directions or no? Well, I think um, the challenging part is covering a lot of ground and being and making sure I, I have my ear to the ground. But I have great colleagues out in Manitoba and uh, and Randy, Minister Bosno out of Edmonton, um, and, and staying strongly connected with them. So I'm also tapped into their communities, but getting continuing to get out. So I think I'm in a special place because I have so much diversity in my constituency. Folks come from so you know different parts of the world with different parts of Alberta and, and our Western provinces, they, you know, when they're moving to Calgary, many of those folks come to my constituency and I have those opportunities to interact with them and hear their life experiences and get feedback from them, which also helps shape my thinking on our region. But then being in, you know, once again, close connection with municipal leaders throughout our region really helps and having an open mind and an openness to have those uh, constant conversations on a regular basis does help me. Um, I'm lucky I have the airport and a, and a great transportation system to be able to be mobile and move around to, to get to different places as well. But, it, you know, it is a challenge for folks in, you know, uh, I'd say not just Western Canada, but from across the country um, who come from rural communities who have to, you know, for many MPs drive a few hours or several hours to get an airport and then catch a plane to catch another plane just to get to Ottawa and back and doing it on a weekly basis. So uh, it's, it's it, it does get challenging over time to balance and manage our schedules. But I can tell you, being over uh, a platform like Zoom or Teams also makes us, uh, can teleport us in a, a, and have conversations in different communities and places uh, all the time. So uh, we're, we're, I'm, I'm working all the time and uh, working more. Uh, but I'm able to do it because uh, we have technology now that helps us do that. Well, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know you're probably heading back to the house here in a few seconds, but I want to thank you so much for doing this, taking time out of your schedule to sit down with us, catch up and just offers always on the table to have you back on the show, George. Uh, it's always great to have you and I'm always happy to chat with my MP as well. So thank you so much.
Well, it's great to see you and thank you so much for having me. I am uh, always open coming and chatting with you on any issue uh, uh, you want to chat about. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to do so and to connect with uh, Calgarians and all the folks in our region who listen to your uh, great uh, podcast and continuing on doing the great work you're doing. And I wish you all the best uh, in the days and months and weeks ahead. And uh, uh, hopefully it doesn't get cold too quick. We can enjoy a little bit of our uh, summer before fall and winter sets in. Well, I thank you so much for that. Um, as I've said in my uh, closing before, well, again, thank you, George, for doing this. And remember, remind everyone, put down the social media account for at least five minutes a day. Go have a conversation with somebody. It helps our democracy. It helps our society and helps us be a better people at the end of the day. So with that, this has been the Cross Border Interviews live special edition with uh, MP for Calgary Skyview, George DeHall. Thank you so much. And remember, everyone, keep talking. Thank you.